Are you looking for small and simple and just a couple little bunks? But you don't want to have to deal with the wiggle and the worry of a single axle. Well then stay tuned, you don't want to miss this. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd over here in Idaho today with the Winnebago Micro Mini 1800. If you're tired of seeing the same old single axle stick and tin camper, if you're looking for tandem axles, if you're looking for upscale, you just don't want big, this, you found it, congratulations. Um, you know, it's been a couple years since I got my hands on one of these and they have taken it up a notch. And actually, this is the very first time I've ever been able to get my hands on the 1800 bunkhouse right here. Um, it, it has a lot of really high-end classy features. The build, the fit, and the finish, the materials on this are all in the premium grade category. Absolutely without question. It comes with the, uh, you know, the uh, like axle lift package and Goodyear Wrangler tires on this thing factory standard um there's a couple different like solar configurations that you can put on these the underbellies enclosed radiant barrier heated I, I mean there's there's a ton of like big fancy features going on in this little package that does mean it is not the least expensive little camper you've ever seen it also means though it's one of the best little campers you've ever seen in terms of feature and function um, I will be fair, I'm going to point out a lot of really uh, sharp things you do not usually find in a small class like this. But along the way, I'm also going to hit on some things like it doesn't have necessarily like a true queen bed. Uh, there's going to be a couple things like that. that there's going to be people go, God bless America. Why don't they make it with a longer walk around bed? They, they do. But, um, you know, it's a longer camper, it's heavier, it's more expensive. This comes in around 3,800 pounds dry weight. The maximum weight of this, by the way, is 5,000 pounds. So. Uh, I, anything above 5,000 pounds that you have as a tow package, and the more you have above that, the happier you're going to be. And the fact that this is riding on tandem axles instead of a single means it just rides and handles so much better, especially with the suspension they have in these. Like I said, there's a ton to hit on this one. I can't wait to hear what you people think about it. Leave me the comments as we go, and make sure you hit subscribe because we've got more Winnie's coming. So now if you think back to that little quick clip at the very beginning of the video when I was like, Do you, are you tired of single axles? Blah, blah, blah. It's the exact same layout. It's just, what if instead of entry level, it was retirement grade? It just wasn't big. That's what we're looking at here. Uh, I mean, the fit, the finish, the material selection. Uh, name another little no slide, uh, you know, double bunk camper that has things like sealed edge uh, countertops and like a dream dinette system, carpetless, ventless, just, you know, TV, awesome looking chemistry and a ton of storage. This thing's like, and it's also, it's central air. It's not even like just a big air conditioner. It's centralized to evenly distribute even through this small thing. I bet you could camp just about anywhere between the radiant package and everything on this. You could camp just about anywhere in the hot sun. As long as you got juice to run that air, you're gonna be fine. Got a big window there over the dinette. One of the things I've always loved about Winnebago's is uh, what they do with their windows. Everything, they all open for airflow, except for the one in the entry door. It is a few full viewing window, which like, you know, if you're sitting at the dinette over here is awesome. It does include from the factory, by the way, the privacy shade and these giant windows. I mean, look at the how it's already letting us enjoy some campsite security over here. Now, I'm, I'm going to show you the good, the bad, with the ugly, with everything in between. And I want you to tell me what you like and what you don't. Uh, any questions or anything you might have. One of the things here is this is not a true queen. It is 80 inches long. It's a tall bed, but it's 54 wide. They did that because this RV has to hit a specific target uh, length so that it can basically fit on a flat bed and, and they can ship multiple campers uh, out to, you know, long distance dealerships, which cuts your price on these by thousands of dollars mind you and i'm loving what they're doing with their decors in here it's it's light without being like farmhousey which is polarizing but it's got enough color enough contrast it's very modern and look at the hardware they're using on like all this flip up cabinet stuff they are seriously taking notes and taking inspirations out of their uh motorized division with all of this and again the cleanliness of execution the fit and the finish is phenomenal but you know things like that extra you know, pantry storage there between the dinette and the bunks. It, there's so many little plus one features that you have here. Like I said, the easy up down dream dinette. So you don't have that pedestal that you're fighting with all the time. Little details like that. And then again, like 
doors on the end of the dinette for easy access to that storage instead of tearing the dinette half apart to get to it. And I think what I would do is I would just get some sliding totes where I could just slide some stuff in and out of that real fast and easy. Now, I'm, uh, I'm sure you've noticed, the dinette can fold down into an extra sleeper. This camper is really kind of set up to sleep anywhere from say like three to five if you're putting the dinette in play, although you are going to need to have a smaller uh, person to do that. Now it's a uh, uh, like standard six and a half foot height in here, because again, the goal of this camper is to not be too large, too heavy, uh, you know, anything like that. But you know, you don't even realize how much storage is going on under the countertop here. Look at this. There's frankly so much, it's hard for me to get this all on camera. The countertop extension over here is something like everybody asks for all the time in different campers. And it's like so many brands just don't provide. Um, well, I, let me back up here. You know, the, the TV can pivot around. So if you're laying in bed, you can watch it. If you're sitting on the dinette, you can watch it. You could pivot it toward the bunks. I wonder if you could watch it if this is toilet TV certified. We are going to find out, ladies and gentlemen. I promise you. I sound, I sound like a politician. I, Joshua V. Nerd, promise you I will investigate the toilet TV certification. Never mind. I'm moving on. It's getting annoying. Um, if it's annoying to me, it's got to be annoying to you. Um, as you saw in our little quick footage, little wireless charge pad right by the door, which I love because I would probably just be Bluetooth in my music to the stereo up here um, and be a nice way for my phone to not be dead. But it's also right inside the door. I could reach around the corner. I could grab it. And good Lord, the amount of storage and everything they have in these compared to what they used to have is fantastic. That, by the way, is a uh, convection microwave oven. What we're looking at over here is an eight cubic foot gas electric fridge. That is the option though. The standard fridge in this is one of those 12 volt compressor fridges. Um, sealed edge counters, big farm sink in a little camper. And even when the sink's in play, you know, you still got some prep space. Look at the thickness, ladies and gentlemen. You could, you could defend yourself from a gas station murder hobo with those. Absolutely. <laughs> now down below here, you got a couple big drawers down below that there's a little drop down panel that gets you to like your winterization bypasses the one thing in this kitchen that i'm like mm, don't like it is <laughs> it's a sponge drawer but if you open it everything falls out so i would maybe hook a little chain up so that it just kind of catches like that but that's like a five cent fix if that's the only thing you need to go camping in this you give us a call we're gonna get you done now notice down here there's a full stovetop, no oven. Because again, what they've done over here is they opted for the uh, convection function. Now closing everything up and backing up just a step, if you look under the counter, uh, well, under the overhead cabinets, I mean, double lights, which is nice. Um, it's not easy to see if there's a couple criticisms you could offer here. Um, you know, the uh, the outlets, they're, they're kind of up high. You've already occupied one of those with the TV. Of course, you could always remove that. There are some other outlets over here, but that's kind of the trick with light, uh, lightweight laminated trailers. The walls aren't thick enough to put outlets in the walls. I love that full backsplash. I wish they would do a side splash. And what's really weird about that is there actually was a window where Winnebago was doing that. I wonder why they stopped, you know? It doesn't, I, I haven't quite figured that out. Um, now up top here, you've got a, a powered vent fan. It's not one of the big fans, but those are an easy upgrade. Our bunks are rated for 250 pounds. And uh, remember the bottom bunk here is like a, a flip up cargo bunk where you can repurpose that a little bit from the outside. The bathroom's also another area that I think a couple people, there's gonna be a couple things I think folks like and a couple where they have concerns. So uh, first of all, in terms of can a big person fit in here, I was actually pleasantly surprised how well I fit in here. Now there's not really a lot of linen storage in the bathroom, but remember like all the extra space in here, you might want to repurpose this somehow. And by the way, that shelf is removable. You see the hanging rack in there above. So this is a no slide little bunkhouse that does have hanging rack storage. And ooh, I like that modern looking little hook there. Also the fact that it has a double hook. I wonder if there's, is there something like you could hook and slot down and hang there? Like a broom? You wouldn't want a broom there. I don't know. It's close, but no cigar, uh, obviously. Um, now, there is no sink in this bathroom. 
That's another one of those things I know people really prefer that. We can get you a uh, Winnebago, like uh, that, similar to this with bunks that has a sink in the bathroom. It does have to be bigger, heavier, longer, more expensive. Notice though, shower surround paneling. Uh, can I stand in the shower? Yes, barely. <laughs> I could stand with my head in the skylight though. Uh, at about 6'3". Now, the, that I do like how that curtain uh, rod there is like radius, though, because it does give you a little bit more elbow room. And I'd be happy to show you this one in road mode if we hadn't already done it. With no slides, this one's just easy. Holy cow, where to begin on this one? Thank you for hanging out with us today. I am, I am excited. They have made some serious advances since the last time I had my hands on these. So we're looking at a micro mini. This is a seven foot wide body. That plus the tandem axles and the fact that it's not terribly heavy makes this extremely nice towing. And what's interesting here, Winnebago is one of the few smaller camper builders that gives you the ability to put like 30 pound tanks on the front right from the factory, like with a bigger shroud and whatnot. Now, you can get those with 20s or 30s, I believe. I could be mistaken on that. Um, I'll, I'll have to double check that. Down below here, they ride on a little bit different chassis. Um, it's a huck bolted, almost kind of aircraft style chassis. And the idea behind that is that it's lighter without sacrificing structural integrity. But one of the things we also have over here, by the way, if you don't know what a huck bolt is, I'm sorry, let me point that out. That's this guy right here. Huck bolts are this really cool thing that um, basically each bolt itself is specifically tuned to a certain tension. And when you uh, screw it together, um, basically the, uh, the end of it shears off so that you know when to stop. It can't be over screwed. You can't over crimp the frame. You can't damage the frame by doing that. And at the speed factories move, that's a beneficial thing. What I was getting at though, we got ourselves a propane cooker hooker down here in case you want to do a little grilling, a little griddling. But look at this. I know the east west bed isn't everybody's cup of tea, but it creates one of the largest pass through compartments you can find in any travel trailer anywhere with big baggage doors on both sides. And it's so large, uh, they even threw a door on the front of it under the bed there, remember, so you could get to it. And our disconnect switch is just around the corner on the left where it's not really likely to get smashed up by cargo. Look at this noise. These are power jacks. Push, button, easy, power jack opportunity here. Now, not everybody loves the stable steps. They're using the uh, fold-out aluminum plank steps here. If you'd prefer the stable steps, you give us a call. That's an easy thing for us to accomplish. Now, you see how the door is right next to the awning? It is imperative in a case like this. A manufacturer uses a uh, anti-slam door. So what does Winnebago go and do? Well, they use the anti-slam door, of course. <laughs> you thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? Now, it's not the world's biggest awning, but they put the biggest awning on us they possibly could because there's that giant over-the-bed uh, window right there. Now, as I come over here, there's a couple really key things to point out. Like, it's cool there's outside TV hookups. There's a black tank flush. And the reason it's on this side, by the way, is because this is the most direct route to the black holding tank so that it actually flushes out better. But down here... Goodyear Wranglers, like off-road truck tires. And I always kind of laugh. I'm like, what, does the uh, does the tread prevent them from spin spinning out in the mud? But the fact is they ride uh, higher and whatnot, and they are not running these on a leaf spring suspension system. This rides on a torsion axle and suspension like a Rockwood and a Flagstaff. What that is going to do is further improve your ride and handling. So we are small, we are light, we are narrow body. I'm running into a slide out behind me and knocking the air out of myself, pardon me, as I almost die. Um, we are we're easy towing, okay. Whew. Breathe, all right. Now this is a cool thing to find. This added some weight to these though. They had to bulk up the chassis because you've got a full bumper, but you've also got an accessory hitch on the back down here where if you want to add like a bike rack or something you can and on the back we have that uh, outside utility shower hot and cold you can get yourself rinsed stuff how you doing folks they just pay me to talk to thin air hope you're having a good day <laughs> everyone looks at me like what are you doing i'm just i'm just talking to myself as though you know anybody would want to listen to me anyway and of course, this is a cargo bunk model. Now, in case you're kind of curious how big this is, take a look at this sample footage. Now, I took the sample footage off of a Cherokee Wolf Pup, but that's me loading an e-bike into that thing. Uh, there was room in there, at least for two of those. Like this, there is plenty of space in this thing. Um, also, you know, whether you're using it 
for cargo or as a bunk, having that light right there is really darn handy. That's actually a good spot to get to see the cabinet construction of this. Let's take a look at this. So this is pocket screwed. It's what's called lumber core. So there is a layer of MDF on the front and the back. It is a sticker wrap, but you see it actually does have a wood core. It is screws into wood. That's not terribly uncommon in anything like this. What is less common though, and this is such a great way to showcase it, is the galvanized uh, wheel wells right here. God forbid you have a blowout. It's an extra silver lining to hopefully... Whoa. Whoa, I just noticed something. Guys, I am in a lot of travel trailers. Fifth wheels, everything. When I see cutouts in flooring like that, it is never that clean. Wow. I am just continually impressed by the fit and the finishing here. One little thing I would love to see, because there's a booth on the other side of this, right? Punch that panel out and give me a bigger cargo space under there. That'd be cool, right? All right, so up here on the roof, one of the first things I want to point out is the fact that uh, we're in a gas electric two-way fridge camper right here, or we're on it, rather. Um, that's what that vent is right there. If you're looking at one that has the normal 12-volt fridge or the standard 12-volt fridge, I guess either fridge is normal, just depends on whatever, that wouldn't be there. Now, I'm a little snobbish in that I really prefer white shrouds uh, on things on the roof, but I don't think that's really going to mess with the air conditioner too much on this one. This is such a small cabin. That's a full-size area. You can put 15s on these. Uh, you turn it into an ice box if you want. And something uh, they've added now standard is their 190 watt roof solar package, especially with the two-way fridge. That makes a, I mean, you can pretty much use all the lights and the fans you want, uh, especially on a sunny day with that thing. And this is what Winnebago offers, but take a look at what we could do for you. Because that 190 watts of solar is nice, but if you're looking for a little bit more, you call Bishes. We did all this work on this trailer for folks. If you want us to custom build a big time solar package for you, add inverters, run wiring, we can do all of that and so much more. You just let us know what you need, we'll get it done. So once again, thank you for joining us. And you know who I bumped into today? I bumped into Gary. <laughs> Gary was like, what are you doing here? Have you had a good time today, Gary? Absolutely, there's what? a lot of good things to see here today. Now this is early in the morning, you haven't had a chance to see a lot. What are you hoping to see? Well, I'd really like to see the Reflection 303 RLS. Uh, that's the one we're kind of looking at with Grand Design. But it was nice to make the comparisons here. Ah, okay. wow. it, do I? Man, I feel like I got to pay you for this. That is just fantastic. <laughs> Gary, thank you so much. Thank you, Joe. Folks, we'll give you the same personal experience. When you're ready, give us a call. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank you, Gary. By the way, that was not the Uncle Gary. He just happened to be an Uncle Gary. Uh, he, he wanted me to make sure I pointed that out. <laughs>